Every other video that benchmarks the 9950X for Blender will do the same thing. They'll render some scenes and benchmarks on this CPU and tell you how fast it is at ray tracing using cycles. But can we be honest for a second? If you're looking at a high-end CPU like a 9950X, it's very likely that you own a discrete graphics card and that you're gonna be doing all of your cycles rendering on the graphics card. So this posed a question for me. How important is the CPU for GPU rendering? Because think about it. If the CPU is too slow to feed new frames to the graphics card, you could be leaving performance on the table. I've been running a lot of tests on this and the results really surprised me. Before we dive into the results, a note on the test setup and on the tests that we're gonna be running. So I've kept constant absolutely everything that I can. Both of these systems are running the same graphics card, which is a Founders Edition RTX 3090. They're running the same graphics drivers, which is 572.6. They have the same SSD, which is a Samsung 990 Pro, running the same version of Blender 4.2.7 on the same OS, Windows 11. And we're gonna test animation rendering performance by looking at two scenes. So one of them is this maze that gets filled up with fluid. And another one is this tower of blocks that gets knocked over and the blocks contain particles inside them. And you know I love Blender physics. This allowed me to test my absolute three favorite uh, Blender physics simulation systems in just two scenes. So the fluid maze will test the flip fluids add-on and the second scene will test rigid body physics and the molecular plus add-on. And then once we're through with those, we will talk about the standard three benchmarks that everyone runs, which are part of the Blender benchmark. So these are the monster, junk shop and classroom. So let's jump into the first set of results. This is for the particle tower with a low number of samples and rendering to JPEG. And both of these systems are rendering using optics with open image denoise, but using the GPU for the denoising as well. So remember, same graphics card, 3090, but when it's paired with a 9950X, it renders more than 33% faster. But to figure out why this is happening, we have to dig a little deeper. So these are the same results but we've broken down the entire render time to cycles render time and sync time, which is the time it takes to prepare the scene and make sure things are synchronized between your system and your graphics card. So the total time per frame is 33.6% faster on the 9950X. When we look at just the render time component of this, which is the ray tracing component, the fast CPU is only 2.7% faster it's the sync time that's almost 50% faster. It's 46.2% faster on the faster CPU. And to make sure this wasn't just a quirk of rendering to JPEGs, I've repeated this for different file formats. So we see a very similar picture when we export to OpenEXR DWAA. This is lossy compression, but very high quality OpenEXR compression. Overall, it's 29% faster. The cycles render itself is only 3.4% faster, but the sync time is 40.1% faster on the faster CPU. If we use a lossless compression, again, a very similar picture. Total time is 15.7% faster. The cycles render time is only 1.5% faster, but the sync time is 21.4% faster. Now, if you look on top of the bar charts, each of those white circles is the total render time of an individual frame. And here there are 158 different data points. If you look at the points for the 9950X, you'll see that some frames took much longer than the others. So I'm still relatively new to benchmarking. I think this is most likely just some background process running on the computer that slowed down some of those frames. But I am more mindful of this and when I do benchmarks in the future, I'll do my best to shut down all these background processes. But you can see even with that, 
That only affected the 9950X, but it's still faster. Let's look at the same results for the three file types for the fluid maze scene. So here, for rendering JPEGs, the total time was exactly 30.0% faster. It's a slightly different picture here, so the render time itself on cycles is also 30.4% faster, and the sync time is 28.6% faster. So the speed up here is roughly equally distributed between the cycles render time and the sync time. And it's very similar for OpenEXR DWAA, so 28% faster in total. The render is 27.7% faster and the sync time is 29.2% faster. Using lossless compression, overall it's 29.2% faster. The cycles render is 29.9% faster and the sync time is 26.7% faster. So this is the overall average for every experiment with a low sample count. So this is both scenes and every file type. And in total here, we have 918 data points. So the total time was 27.6% faster, just because of a faster CPU. The cycles render time was 23.1% faster. And the sync time, on average, was 33.3% faster. Now, rendering with a low sample count is how I render most of my projects, especially if they're tens of thousands of frames. But let's run those same experiments with a higher sample count. And all of these experiments with a high sample count were only ran for OpenEXR DWAA. If we look at the particle tower, kind of as I expected, the overall difference is less dramatic because when you're spending more time on the GPU, you're spending a lower proportion of your time doing this syncing. But still, overall, with 256 samples, the total time was 5.2% faster on the 9950X. The render time itself, specifically, is 2.9% faster, and the sync time is 34.8% faster. If we look at the fluid maze, very similar picture, so total time is 2.1% faster, the cycles render time was only 1.9% faster, and the sync time was 31.0% faster. And it's interesting that the cycles render time was a lot faster with a low cycle count, but um, almost unchanged with a high cycle count. It makes me suspect that with a low number of samples, there are some kind of synchronization steps, or there is some overhead to each frame, which is counted within cycles render time. And then as you render for longer, that becomes less important. But if you have a better theory or you know what's going on here exactly, let me know. I just found it surprising that cycles render time with low samples was like 30% faster, but here it's almost the same. Now, this is the average for both scenes with a high sample count. The overall render time was 2.7% faster with the fastest CPU. The cycles render time was 2.1% faster. And the sync time overall was 33.6% faster. And I also ran the standard three benchmarks that are in the Blender benchmark. And it's similar to what I expected. So each experiment ran three times. And on average, the samples per minute was 3.1% faster for the monster scene, 2.2% faster for junk shop, and 2.5% faster for classroom. And this makes sense because these are designed to benchmark GPUs, and so they're longer renders. I'm not even sure if the benchmark results here count this uh, synchronization time. And if you know whether it does or not, then I'd be very grateful if you'd let us know down in the comments below so we can all learn together. So, if you're looking for faster graphics card renders, should you be considering upgrading your CPU? Well, if you're like me and you're rendering very long projects with only a couple of seconds per frame, then it can actually make an enormous difference. And note that this is with a 3090, which at this point is a two generations old graphics card. It's possible that with a newer graphics card, like a 4090 or even a 5090, it's possible that these differences are more pronounced because 
you're spending even shorter per frame and so you're more reliant on this CPU performance to get the frame ready for the next uh, graphics card render. But if you're only rendering still images or you have the luxury of rendering each frame for a minute, multiple minutes, an hour, then this is much less important for you and you're better off spending the same money on a beefier GPU. If you found that informative, it really helps the channel if you hit like, subscribe and let me know in the comments below which other Blender benchmarks you'd like to see. 95.9% .9 of you are not subscribed. What are you thinking guys? You're going to miss these videos where I talk about how important is your SSD. Does investing in a fast SSD speed up your renders or is it just a waste of money? I'm going to be looking at PCIe scaling and I might even have a comparison between 3090, 4090 and 5090. So subscribe if you don't want to miss those, and I'll see you next time. Brought to you by Autofocus Pro. Autofocus your scenes in a single click.